Hello everyone and welcome back to my video series on coding with Flutter. Today I'm going to start a mini video series about testing. And testing is a very important topic in software development and it is crucial to building mobile apps that work as intended and have less bugs. So Flutter provides some great support for writing tests and we can use it to write three kinds of tests. So we will be looking at unit tests, widget tests, and integration tests. In this video specifically, we will be exploring unit tests and I'll be using an existing project that I've already covered extensively in some of my previous videos as an example. And that is my uh, Firebase authentication demo. Now I'll be doing some live coding. So if you want to follow along as I do that, you can head to the GitHub project for this page here. And then if you tap on the releases tab and choose uh, this release that I label inherited widgets, um, then you can download the code and then you can follow along. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and download the code. Uh, just as a note, this is already configured to run both on iOS and Android. Okay, so we're going to start off by reviewing some of the code for signing in the user with an email and password. So if we open our IDE, we have this uh, login page over here. And this is uh, where we define a stateful widget, uh, which includes a form and some validation code. And that is what we use in here to uh, let the user authenticate with email and password. Now in this video, I want to focus specifically on one thing uh, within this page, and that is the actual validation code that we run when the user tries to enter an email and password. So what we have here is these two text form fields, one for the email and one for the password, and they both specify a validator that is used uh, when the user tries to sign in. So for example, if we try to sign in with an empty email and password, we will be informed that empty email and password is not valid, but if we sign in with correct values, so fill in email and password, then at that stage we can sign in into the application. So again, today we will just focus on this form and on the validation code, <clears throat> and our aim is to write some unit tests for this. So the first thing that we want to do is to actually have a look at the method signature for this validator object and see what it looks like. So here we are inside the text form field uh, constructor. And if we look at the uh, signature for this text form field validator, we find that it is a method that returns a string. Uh, it takes a type, uh, which is used to specify a value. And uh, this is what we have to implement uh, in order to decide if our form field um, can validate or not. Now, if we wanted to write some unit tests to check that the validator code in here works correctly, we would probably have a hard time doing it because really we have encoded all the logic for the validation right within this login page. So what we actually want to do is to write a separate class that will take care of performing the validation for our email and password fields. So uh, at the top of the file here, uh, what we are going to do now is to create a new class. And this is going to be called uh, email field validator. And inside we're going to define a method uh, which is as follows. So static string validate. And this takes us a string value. And so this is a method that takes a string as an input and needs to return a string as an output. Now, what we want to return in here is exactly the same logic that we are using um, down here to validate our uh, text form field. So we can literally take this, copy it, and if we go back here, we can just paste it and return. Okay, so now that we have this class, which encodes the logic for validating the email, we can go back to the uh, form validation code and use it directly. So in here, this is the validator for our email value. And what we can do is replace the return value with an email field validator dot validate. And we can pass the value. So this will work. 
and uh, is how we extract the logic. However, um, I want to show you a little trick which uh, makes this syntax even shorter. So if you remember, the validator um, method here uh, just needs to take a string as an input and return a string as an output. But because the email field validator, the validate method that we have created also takes a string as an input and returns a string as an output, we can replace this whole thing here with just email field validator dot validate and the Dart compiler knows what to do with it. So it will just pass on the value to this method that we have defined. So um, this is something worth keeping in mind as you write code in Dart that this is something that you can do with callbacks and it's something that I think it's really nice and makes your code more compact. Okay, one more thing that I want to quickly explain is that we can see here that we are using the class name of the email field validator dot validate and we have not created an actual instance of this class. And that is because we define the validate method here to be static. So um, I think just because the logic for this is very, very simple, I find that it's perhaps easier in this case to just create a static method so that we don't have to create an instance of email field validator and down where we use the code we can just say email field validator the class itself dot validate okay so we have created our email field validator over here and we're going to do exactly the same thing for the password uh, validation code so up at the top we're going to take this code and then we're going to go up and define a new class called password field validator and inside again we're going to define a static string validate method which takes a value and this will return um, the same logic that we have in the password in this case we're going to change the text uh, if the password is not valid and then we can just take this class and inside here we're going to do the same trick and so we're going to say password field validator dot validate. So I can save and hot reload. And just to make sure that this still works, if I try to sign in here, the fields are not valid. But if I just enter an email, I can see that this is cleared. And if I enter the valid password and sign in, uh, this now works and takes me to the welcome page. Okay, so what you have done so far is to take the logic for validating email and password and we have moved it into a separate class. And so the reason for this is that it is a lot simpler to test the code inside here just by testing the class than somehow trying to figure out how to do this if the code lives inside this login page state, which has a lot more complexity to it. And we're going to see how to write tests for this in a second. Uh, so it's now time to start taking a look at how to actually rewrite tests in Flutter. And every time we create a new project, uh, it also comes with a template test. Uh, and this is how we would write a test, uh, specifically a widget test. Now we're not covering widget tests on this specific video. And what we want to do instead is to write our first unit test for the email and password validators that we have created. So on this test folder here, we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it email password validator test. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do here is to import a package that we're going to use uh, in order to write our tests, and this is called test.dart. We then need to define a main method, which is where we will uh, call all our tests. And then by the, we can define a test by calling a method called test, which takes a string argument, which is normally the title or the name of our test. And then it takes uh, a method, uh, which is where we define the body of the text. And when we write tests, uh, normally they're always in a specific format. So we would have some kind of setup for the test. We have some code, which we use to run the test. And at the end of it, we want to verify the results to check that um, the code that has run has been behaving as intended. So let's see how this would look like if we wanted to try to write a test for our email field validator. So we would create a method called test 
and we would want to name it in, in a way that is recognizable so that we know what the test does. And so one such uh, example would be empty email returns error, uh, error string, right? And here we're then going to define the code that uh, we want to, to, to run. So if, we, if you remember, we define a class called email field validator and this has a validate method in it uh, we need to remember obviously to import this uh, so that we can use it in our test <coughs> and so when we call the email field validator validate we need to pass a string and what it gives us is a result which is either a string with an error message or null and so uh, when we pass in an empty string, what we want to then do is to expect that our result, uh, result is a specific string. I'm just gonna copy paste it from here because otherwise I might type it incorrectly. And so here we have our first test. You will notice that for each test that we write on the IDA, if you are using IntelliJ or Android Studio, we have this little arrow which we can use to run the test directly. So if I tap on that and I let the test run, uh, I should see that the test in here goes uh, green. So it's, it says all tests passed. So that, that is looking good. Uh, so let's try it now to write a second test still for the email but in this case we want to say that non empty email returns null and just like we did before we're going to define the body of the text and in here we're going to say that uh, we take this result which is uh, email uh, dot validate and here we pass some email so in this case because the text that we passed in is not empty, we would expect that this um, result is now null. And uh, just like this, we've written our second test, which we can also now run. And this should also become green. Um, if we wanted then to take this to the next step, we need to also write the test that um, tests the password field validator. So the way we can do that is to write two more tests. Now, because the email and password tests are actually very, very similar, I'm just going to quickly copy paste and adjust them. So here I'm going to say empty password returns an error string and non empty password returns null. Here I'm going to add to use password field validator and in here as well. And one thing uh, that I can do now is to run the tests and see if, if they pass. So let's try that and let's run this first test. Uh, so here I would expect that if the password is um, empty, then I'm going to get a, an arrow here. Now, in this case, it looks like the test has failed. So if we open up the debug window and we check what happened here, we see that we have expected email can be empty and actual result that came from running the test is um, password can be empty, which is different. So the ID is gently telling us that we've done something wrong. And in fact, I forgot to actually update the error a string for the password case and in fact this should be password so my fault here for probably for just copy pasting the code and this is what sometimes happens and but this is also why it's good to write tests because they catch um, error cases uh, so in this case the code was correct but I've written the wrong test expectation so now that I fixed this I can now run the test again and at this stage it should go green so there we go, now the test is green and uh, everything is looking correct. Okay, so now we have all the tests that we want in place. So I just want to quickly do one thing, which is tidy up this test that doesn't really do anything. And then I just want to run them all. And the way I can do that is by tapping here on this button on, on the main method. Uh, and this will run all the tests that are contained within this file.
Uh, another way to do that in uh, this IDE is to choose the test file that we want and right click. And then from here, we can also run the test from here. And if we wanted to run all the tests that are in our project, we can select the text folder itself and, and run the tests from here. So this is uh, how we, we can do that. Uh, so we can see that all the tests have gone green now and it means that everything is working as intended. Okay, so in this video, I've shown you how to write unit tests for your classes. And one thing that I want to point out here is that these tests are really quite simple, just two lines for each test. And in this test file, there are no widgets and no UI code at all. And that is because we have chosen to move the logic for our validation code into separate classes. Now, this is very desirable because it means that we can test the business logic for our application in isolation from the UI code. In the next video, we're going to take another look at the login page and I'll show you how you can write widget tests, which is a very powerful way of testing your widget classes. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to stay up to date with my next videos, I encourage you to sign up on my website, uh, Coding with Flutter. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.